Hello, I'm Lee Schwartzberg, Chief Medical Officer of One Oncology and Medical Director of West Cancer Center. And today I'm gonna to be talking about breast cancer brain metastases, which is an interesting area with a lot of activity. Let's start by talking about the challenges of brain metastases in breast cancer. This is an increasing consequence of the better treatments that we have for all subtypes of breast cancer. And we're seeing that as many as a half of the patients over the course of their disease with advanced cancer will ultimately get breast cancer into the metastatic to the brain. And that particularly happens in triple negative breast cancer. The problem with treating uh, BCBM or breast cancer brain metastases is the blood brain barrier. And there are efflex uh, pumps in the brain which limit exposure to cytotoxic agents. So we have the situation many times where we can control systemic disease, but disease progresses in the brain because the chemotherapy drugs that we've used traditionally just don't get in uh, to the brain parenchyma very well. Additionally, until recently, there were few preclinical models uh, to test drugs for brain metastases, but now there are some and it's making it easier to develop preclinically drugs that may have benefit. Also, until recently, many clinical trials actually excluded patients with brain metastases. That has changed dramatically over the last few years, and most patients with at least stable brain metastases can now be enrolled on clinical trials of new drugs. And as you'll see, there is even a move now to include patients with active brain metastases, even those that have not been uh, treated with radiation or surgery uh, when they're active and growing uh, because of the activity of some new drugs. And you can see the blood brain barrier shown on the right here uh, in schematic form. The outcome for brain metastases from breast cancer varies substantially among the uh, biologic subtypes that we look at either the HER2 positive, uh, either with uh, hormone receptor positive or negative, triple negative and hormone receptor positive HER2 negative. And as you see in the left-hand panel here, patients in green who have hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer are less likely to get uh, brain metastases and it takes longer for them to get it. Uh, and conversely, those that are hormone receptor negative, whether they're HER2 positive or triple negative, much more frequently get brain metastases earlier in their course. And the median might be around two years for these patients. The outcome for patients in terms of survival also varies by the biologic subtype. And the patients who do the best, interestingly, are patients with HER2 positive breast cancer whether they're hormone receptor positive or negative. The triple negative breast cancer patients do very poorly and the median survival, once you are diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer metastatic to the brain is under six months. So we have a huge unmet need for all breast cancer brain metastases, but particularly for the triple negative breast cancer. The initial approach to brain metastases should be to focus on, first of all, biopsying a brain metastases, even if there are multiple lesions, if it's the first or only site of recurrence, because we can never be sure that uh, it is from the primary cancer that started in the breast unless we have a biopsy. Surgery is uh, becoming ever more common to remove lesions uh, if they're solitary or even if there are a few ipsilateral lesions. And surgery for brain metastases can be done very effectively and patients can go home within a couple of days. It actually, the recovery is uh, quite brisk for this type of um, uh, surgery if the uh, surgeon is experienced in doing this. Typically, they try to do a gross total resection and when the tumor is taken out, not only should the typical histology and immunohistochemistry markers of ERPR and HER2 be done, but increasingly it is valuable to do molecular profiling on a brain metastases. And recent data suggests that 
the uh, molecular characteristics of a brain metastasis from breast cancer are substantially different than uh, the genomic profile from the primary tumor or from other systemic metastases. This is a, an area of great interest in research, and we may in the future be able to target patients uh, with uh, targeted therapies that get into the brain based on their specific alterations, but that does not occur yet. Uh, more information is helpful. Once a patient has a resection of a brain metastasis, they typically get post-operative radiation therapy to the resection cavity. But despite this, the recurrence rate is high um, and uh, will certainly be at least 50% within one year, if not even worse. So radiation is recommended. There's been a lot of change in radiation over the last decade. The typical the way we treated patients with brain metastases was whole brain radiation therapy in the past, even when there was one lesion resected. That's not done anymore. And that's because stereotactic radiosurgery has been shown to be beneficial in this setting, as well as treating non-surgical brain metastases. But in this study that was published a few years ago, there was a randomization of either SRS or whole brain radiation therapy. If you look at the, in a resected brain lesion and treating the resection cavity, if you look to the right panel here, you'll see that the, um, the overall survival is identical with either radiation technique. But what's important about using stereotactic radiosurgery is that the cognitive deterioration which is so common with whole, standard whole brain radiation therapy is delayed when reduced by the use of SRS. So that has become the standard. Not only has it become the standard for treating resected uh, lesion cavities, but it's now the standard for treating multiple brain metastases and other randomized trials looking at treating uh, up to five lesions with stereotactic radiosurgery compared to whole brain radiation therapy have shown the same results as treating a resected cavity, which means that the uh, cognitive decline is less even when you're treating multiple brain metastases uh, with stereotactic radiosurgery compared to whole brain radiation therapy. This uh, slide shows a prospective observational trial of a large patient population, uh, almost 1,200 patients who had up to 10 tumors treated with stereotactic radiosurgery. And um, what they found was no difference in median overall survival. Numerically, one tumor did a little uh, better than the two to four or five to 10, but there was no difference in anywhere from two to 10 tumors being treated with SRS in terms of survival, in terms of neuro neurologic deterioration, or the cumulative incidence of repeat SRS or salvage whole brain radiation therapy. And the survival is shown in the right. It's about 11 months for patients who have more than one tumor and a little over a year for one tumor. So still uh, prognosis is limited, but these patients do very well. So the standard approach now for multiple lesions is to, uh, to give stereotactic radiosurgery unless there's a very large number of lesions. I want to turn to HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer because this is where the most progress has been made for brain metastases. And there's very interesting and encouraging data that is coming out. Up to 50% of patients with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer will develop brain metastases. And trastuzumab and pertuzumab do not penetrate the CNS under normal conditions. We do know that uh, patients who have hormone receptor negative disease, as I mentioned, are more likely to get CNS metastases, and younger patients are much more likely to get CNS metastases compared to older patients, up to threefold uh, higher risk. The landscape of systemic options for HER2 positive uh, BCBM has changed substantially in the last year or two. We have known now for about a decade that the small molecule TKI lapatinib combined with capecitabine does have some uh, activity, but it is modest uh, in brain metastases. And we have the second generation TKIs, which I'll go over, neratinib and tutatinib, 
which in combinations have shown benefit. And there's some early data with the ADCs, which I'll also go over. So the NALA trial was a trial that looked at uh, all comers um, for patients who had had two or more prior lines of HER2 targeted therapy and randomized patients to lapatinib, capecitabine as the control arm or neratinib, capecitabine uh, as the experimental arm. So uh, the, the primary endpoint was overall survival, but an important secondary endpoint was time to intervention or CNS metastases. And these were the results in terms of the time to intervention for CNS metastases. It was reduced with neratinib and CAPE compared to lapatinib and CAPE, and that was statistically significant. This meant that there was less radiation therapy, surgery, or anti-cancer medication given to these patients who had um, lip, uh, neratinib compared to CAPE uh, and CAPE versus lapatinib and CAPE. The HER2 CLIMB study was a trial of adding a, a newer uh, TKI to catinib versus placebo to a combination of trastuzumab and capecitabine and previously treated HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. This was two to one randomization. And importantly, it allowed brain metastases, either active or stable brain metastases. And about half the population did have those. And uh, this was the randomization for the entire study with the primary endpoint progression-free survival. Uh, a secondary endpoint was CNS progression-free survival. And this was shown for all patients with brain metastases, a dramatic improvement with tucatinib added to CAPE trastuzumab with 40% of patients uh, without progression at one year compared to none with uh, 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 patients not receiving tucatinib. And the 68% uh, improvement in time to CNS progression or death for all patients with brain metastases, creating a new standard for patients with HER2 positive brain metastases. Now, here's the overall survival, which shows also a 42% reduction in the risk of death and a one year survival of 70% for patients with brain metastases receiving tucatinib uh, compared to under 50% for patients. Uh, who uh, did not receive tucatinib. More recently, we've seen it broken down by the active brain mets and the stable brain mets. In even the active brain metastases, one third of patients were alive without progression with tucatinib uh, at one year compared to none in the um, active brain metastases group. And the overall survival was 50% better with one year survival of 72% versus 41% in patients with active brain metastases. For patients with stable brain metastases, again, half the patients had uh, no progression at uh, one year, which was a 69% reduction in the risk of CNS progression or death. And there was a numerical, but not a statistical improvement in overall survival uh, with, with a 12% reduction with in stable brain metastases. Turning to the... Uh, antibody drug conjugates, we have less data, but here is some data from a, T, a study of TDM1 in HER2 positive breast cancer with brain metastases. And this waterfall plot shows that there is in fact uh, some activity for TDM1 with a 21% response rate and a 43% clinical benefit rate. Responses were seen in the brain with or without radiation therapy added progression free survival was pretty modest at 5.5 months. Um, this is worthy of further exploration. And then uh, we have a very small subset for patients treated with trastuzumab deruxtecan, um, a drug that has shown a great promise and benefit in patients with late line HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. And in the Destiny Breast 01 subgroup analysis of 24 patients, you can see the progression free survival in patients with brain metastases at 18 months, and we certainly need more data for this group. Now, turning to HER2 negative breast cancer brain metastases, we don't have any therapies that are FDA approved, although guidelines do talk about capecitabine, platinum, and etoposide. Many drugs are in uh, investigation here, as shown on this slide. If we look at the HER2 hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, 
patients treated with abemaciclib, which is a CDK4-6 inhibitor that is felt to have brain penetration. In this small uh, study, you see that there is some benefit to uh, abemaciclib in patients who have intracranial uh, disease as shown in the upper uh, graph on the right. And a few patients did achieve uh, a documented response and more patients had at least some shrinkage in tumors. So there is some activity from abemaciclib in this setting. Pembrolizumab has also been tested in CNS disease in a variety of solid tumors, including uh, leptomeningeal disease. And um, here are the results, which uh, for patients with leptomeningeal disease, and uh, there was some benefit, but it is fairly modest. And we don't see uh, clinically, anecdotally, a huge amount of activity from uh, the immune checkpoint inhibitors yet. There are some drugs that are in uh, investigation, and the most promising of those is Paclitaxel Trevitide, or ANG1005, uh, which is a peptide drug conjugate, which binds a receptor in the brain and allows it to cross the endothelial cells. And here is early data with uh, this drug, by HER2 status. And you can see that there are responses in the CNS. They do tend to be a little bit more in the HER2 positive group, but there are certainly patients in the HER2 negative group that also achieve a CNS uh, response as well as extracranial responses. So this is a promising drug that is in late, late um, stage investigation, and uh, we'll see additional data from this drug. There are these trials that are ongoing with a number of different agents right now. And uh, we're encouraged by the number of clinical trials that are ongoing for HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. So in summary, breast cancer brain metastases uh, are a growing problem in advanced breast cancer as systemic therapy improves. The initial therapy is still radiation plus or minus surgery and SRS has become the standard. We've done very well in the HER2 positive subtype with neratinib and tucatinib and maybe the ADCs, but traditional chemotherapy is largely ineffective and we may see some uh, benefit for the uh, abemacycle, the CDK4-6 inhibitor that penetrates the brain, but new drugs are urgently needed and many are in clinical trials. Thank you so much for your attention.